Hey girlies and welcome back to the pod. Today we are talking all about summer self-care. So self-care activities that you can do during the summer that are very summery, kind of perfect for the season. So things related to being outside, skincare, um, that type of stuff. But first let's chat all about my week. Um, currently my most pressing issue, uh, there is no C or there is no AC in the upstairs of my entire house. So currently where I live, it is high 90s outside with humidity. It feels like 100 with humidity. And um, inside of my house upstairs is almost 90 degrees. Yeah. Um, my room is upstairs, so I can't sleep in my room. Um, that's been fine. The only bad thing, though, is, well, first of all, there is a weird bug behind me. The only bad thing is that to get the part to fix the AC, um, that takes a month or two. So there's not going to be AC in my house for like a month or two. And it's so hot and it's so humid. And it's generally awful. Um, and where I'm recording is in my room. Um, so currently sweating a bit. Um, but I've been trying to stay out of upstairs because it's just been, you know, disgusting. To be fair, though, I did just get back from my Greece trip, which was super fun, um, very great. We went to a bunch of different islands, which was cool, and then stayed in Athens for, like, two days um, and went to the Parthenon and saw all these cool ruins. Um, oh, my God. I'm so hot right now. Sorry. But the bad thing about Greece is, because obviously in the U.S., uh, the flight back was 12 hours. And I also had a connection. So that was kind of painful. Um, But overall, the trip was really great. Super fun. And then this week, I'm going dorm shopping. I've been kind of going dorm shopping, but I really don't have anything. And I've been texting with my roommate, um, trying to coordinate stuff, trying to figure out what we actually need, um, which is kind of stressful. Um, But the main issue in life right now, which I feel bad about complaining about, but it is just genuinely so hot that I just don't know how people can live without AC. It's horrible. Like, and the worst part too is that I'm pretty sure my dorm room, uh, this coming year at school is not going to have AC. I'm trying to figure out a way to get AC, but at the moment it doesn't have AC. And I'm going to William and Mary, which is like literally in a swamp and it's going to be so humid. And I'm just thinking, or I was thinking the other night when I was in my bed, I was like, wow, this is what my life is going to be like for the next nine months because it is so freaking hot and there is no AC. And even if you have a fan, that doesn't do anything besides circulate the air and it is so hot. And I learned that. Okay. That was a fun fact I learned these past few days. Fans don't make anything cooler. They just circulate the air. What? What? Since when? Um, so yeah, that's been fun. Also, I found a new show that I liked, uh, Suits. Pretty good. It's about a law firm, which is interesting. Um, and I feel like people have been telling me to watch, watch it for a while, and I just haven't. But I started, and I'm on the second season, and it's already really good. It's kind of as, like, Criminal Minds, where each episode, there's, like, a new case, Um, personally, I don't really like Criminal Minds, uh, but this is interesting and it's good. So 10 out of 10 recommend, um, make sure y'all leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and make sure you're following me at the Girly Gold Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, or Pinterest or all three. doesn't matter. Um, I've been kind of slacking on my social media game mainly because I've been out of the country and haven't really felt any motivation to you know do anything because I'm like oh my god vacation yay I don't want to do work even if my work is literally to make a TikTok it still feels like work okay and that's just uh, I can't I can't it's summer I'm going to college I just I'm so done but that's okay because we have an episode even though I am literally sweating if anyone's watching this on video I'm talking right now, please don't. My face is going to be so red by the end of this. I can feel myself sweating. Um, so enjoy. Enjoy my suffering. 
kidding. I promise I'm fine. I'm just really hot. Um, but anyway, okay, let's get into the self-care. First things first, we have hot girl walks. Okay. Hot girl walks. Pretty much the thing you've probably heard about for the past year because it's been trending for a while and I feel like people always talk about it, but I feel like it's genuinely just so iconic and just, I don't know. It's so fun because going on a walk, you're like, "Mm, I don't really want to go on a walk. It's summer. It's hot. That's disgusting. But a hot girl walk, see, that has a bit more appeal to it, okay? So whether you're a person who can just go on walks for fun, uh, can't relate personally, um, or if you're someone who needs the title hot girl walk to motivate you to do any exercise whatsoever, this is for you, okay? Hot girl walks. You put in your headphones or just listen to your phone out loud. Who cares? No one is by you. We don't care. Play your music. Play your summer playlist. Whatever. Or cute outfit. Or don't. Sunglasses. It's fun. Walk in your neighborhood. Go to an arboretum. Go to a state park. Whatever. Um, Just walk. And you can go with friends or by yourself or with a dog. But honestly super fun, super good for you. You're getting your exercise, especially if you're someone who doesn't like go to the gym regularly or doesn't play a sport or doesn't really do, you know, like exercise things. I am calling myself out (laughs) at the moment. Um, but hot girl walks, the perfect summer self-care. Um, I went on a lot of hot girl walks in June. It is currently too hot to walk outside. Uh, I mean, I could, but like I said, it is high 90s with extreme humidity, and I can barely sit inside, much less exercise in the heat. But if you're like me, you live somewhere where it is extremely hot and disgusting and no one is outside ever because it's because it is too hot, um, you can go on walks in the morning or the nighttime when it's cooling down, when it's less you know, warm instead of going, like, in the middle of the day. But hot girl walks, so, so iconic. Okay, the next thing I want to mention before I get into my other self-care things on this list is that if you are actually, like, struggling with your mental health or just life in general, you need help, um, maybe look into more, like, serious options besides, like, self-care because obviously... I'm not trying to say, like, you can solve all your life problems by going on a walk or doing a face mask, okay? No, that's not true. Like, if you're depressed, you're depressed and you should get help, you know? But this is more just for someone who just needs a little pick-me-up. This is not trying to solve your mental illness. So I'm just trying to put this out there so, um, in case people get salty about this episode, um, you know that. Okay, moving on. Um, next thing on my summer self-care list, watch the sunset or the sunrise, okay? Depending if you're a morning or night person, uh, personally, I feel like most of us would choose sunset, but the thing is, watching the sunrise is so fun and so peaceful and, like, nobody's out and it's so nice. Um, there's currently, like, this really scary bug flying around in my room, which just makes life worse because it's, like, hot and there's, like, this weird beetle thing in my room which is making me really paranoid um also i'm having like a sweat mustache now because it's so hot um anyway okay it's fine not gonna let the bug bother me uh my room is i swear like a breeding ground for all bugs during the entire summer it's disgusting uh (laughs) welcome to my life um anyway so watching sunset sunrise peaceful, fun activity. Um, I feel like it's a good time just to reflect. Most of these self-care activities are just like times for reflection. I feel like that's the biggest goal we're trying to get out of this is just having like peace, peaceful times with yourself, um, reflecting on what's going on with your life, what you're grateful for, um, things you've been struggling with, maybe things you haven't really had the time to address or to really think about. Um, This is what your summer self-care is all about. So main focus on everything is reflection. And I feel like watching the sunset or sunrise is the perfect time for that. You can just kind of appreciate nature, watch what's going on around you, um, maybe some people watching. That's always kind of fun. 
Um, Related to reflection, I think another good self-care activity is something you can do in a journal, and that is creating a gratitude list, okay? And I've talked about this on my podcast before, maybe like a year or two ago. I don't know if I have recently, Um, but a gratitude list is literally exactly what it sounds like. Um, You're writing a list of things you're grateful for each day. These can be little things. These can be small, like big things. It doesn't, they don't only have to be big things. Like you can say, I'm grateful for um, my dog. I don't know. I'm grateful for this friend I have. They were super sweet to me today. They knew I was struggling. Um, I'm grateful for myself for taking time out of the day to um, just kind of chill and relax. Maybe you're like, I'm grateful that I got a new car today. I don't know. It can be like a big, small thing. But writing down stuff you're grateful for each and every day or even just a few times a week I think can be really beneficial because it's easy to get stuck in the mindset of, oh my God, my life sucks. Everything is horrible. What is going on? Why is so many things going wrong in my life? And then the thing is, when you start focusing on those negative things, that's all you're going to see. You're only going to see what's going wrong in your life. You're not going to be seeing all the good things, even if these good things are smaller. But the thing is, the small things can build up. Also, speaking about buying a car, I did get a new car today because as I mentioned a few weeks ago or months ago, um, I totaled my car in April, maybe, and I haven't had a car since. Uh, during that time, I've been viciously made fun of, of my driving skills, which I mean is fine because was the accident my fault? According to the insurance people, yes, but like, was it? I don't know. It probably was. Anyway, it's fine. Not saying it is or it isn't. Uh, so I haven't had a car and I've been driving my dad's old car, which was like a 20 year old SUV, which was just, it literally looked like I was a drug dealer. Because I was driving a 20-year-old luxury car as a child. Um, but, you know, that was fine. But now, got a new car. We picked it up today. Drove an hour and a half to get it. Um, so, I have been out all day. I literally got home, like, 20 minutes ago. And I immediately sat down in my room, which I have said is so hot. Um, I can also still hear that bug flying around. But I'm trying not to focus on it. Um, it is making me really paranoid though, and I don't know where it is, and that is just scaring me more. But anyway, so I got a new car. That's something I'm grateful for. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to be allowed to drive it. My sister has said she doesn't want me to drive it because obviously, um, you know, I crashed the other one that we had shared, but you know, that's okay. It's fine. I'm grateful for that though. So gratitude list try that out. It doesn't have to be like a big thing. You can write maybe three things you're grateful for or good exercise is set like a five minute timer and write things you're grateful for um, during the whole five minutes because there will be a point where you will get stuck and think, okay, I can't think of anything. Like I'm done. Thing is, you can always keep thinking of more things. So doing like an exercise like this is a good way to test that. And then you can look back at it and realize, wow, There are a lot of things I'm grateful for. There are a lot of things that are going well in my life, even though um, my AC might be out. Um, Sorry, I'm going to keep bringing that that up. Even though there's a bug in my room that looks like a flying beetle slash wasp type thing, even though there's no AC. I got a new car today, and that's pretty lit, okay? Yes, I just used lit unironically. Okay, leave me alone. Um, But anyway, gratitude list try it out everybody i promise i promise y'all i promise it'll be so worth it and so much better okay try it out okay next thing it's kind of like mm, more like one thing but like just a general idea i feel like i always feel my best my healthiest like life is going great when I have a consistent morning or night routine, meaning that I feel the best when I know what is going to happen in the morning. I know when I'm going to wake up. I'm 
pretty much waking up around the same time every day, going to bed around the same time every day. And you're like, Carmen, hmm, like, why would I do that? Uh, well, because it makes you feel good. It makes you healthy. So having a routine, it gives you less things to worry about in life. So you can actually focus on important things. It's also a good time to reflect your morning and night routine. It's a peaceful time in the morning. You don't have to play any music. You can just get ready and silence. That's my favorite thing. I know some people like to like, you know, get ready with music or like loud noises, but I can't, okay? I don't want to speak to anybody in the morning or at night. I'm just like done with that. Uh, but anyway, create a consistent morning or night routine. And this doesn't have to be like, a routine you've seen on TikTok or something that has to look aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't. It just has to be something that works well for you. For example, is my morning routine aesthetically pleasing? Um, no. My night routine aesthetically pleasing? No. Okay, but it works for me. So as long as you can find a routine that works for you, that's important. So some tips to do that. Um, Think about yourself. Think about how much time you actually want to spend on this. If you're someone who loves to get into your skincare, you need a long skincare routine, do that. If you're someone who can only stick to a face wash and moisturizer, you're that person. Do that. Don't kid yourself by thinking, oh, I need to use all these serums. I need to use toners. I need all these extra things. Okay, because if you're not going to stick to it, don't do it. Um... So it's all about knowing yourself for a consistent morning or night routine. Stuff that is manageable, stuff you can do every day, and make it reasonable for yourself. And don't kid yourself by thinking, hmm, I saw this on a TikTok, or I saw this online. It looks really pretty. I'm going to do that too. Also, I'd like to point out, you don't need a bunch of expensive products to um, have a good morning or night routine, specifically for like skincare focused or even just like I don't know whatever you would do like shampoo conditioner whatever you're doing um but focusing on skincare I feel like as someone who struggled with acne it's easy to think like oh I need this really harsh product or maybe I need this expensive acne product the thing is you don't okay something I have yet loved using is Chirology and that is not that expensive if you think about it but I just use their um, treatment cream that helps and then like a moisturizer and a face wash that's specifically for sensitive skin. And that's fine. That's all I use in my skincare routine. I face wash, my Curology treatment, and then a moisturizer and that's it. And I'm done, okay? Because I'm not the person who wants to be lathering on a bunch of serums, a bunch of different creams, uh, do a scrub. I can't do that, okay? I just want something easy, something simple, something that's not going to irritate my skin. And I want to let you know, you don't need like a million bucks to do that. You can actually do it very affordably. So I suggest looking into your resources, using YouTube, um, getting product suggestions, using Google, searching for stuff related to your skin type. Personally, I have um, sensitive acne prone combination skin. Combination meaning parts of my face are really oily and parts of it are really dry. Um, sensitive products irritate my skin really easily, can get rashes, um, can cause me to break out, acne prone. Prone to acne, okay. My pores clog really easily. I've struggled with hormonal acne since I was in sixth grade, okay, and I'm now 18. So a long time. A long time um so that's been hard for me if you're someone who has great skin um good for you and I feel like people get with good skin get mad because everyone else gets mad at them they're like I have one pimple and everyone's like shut up and they're like but this is bad I have one pimple and the thing is like you can be sad and have one pimple you can be sad and have like a face covered in pimples and you still feel awful okay so no shaming people for their skin. I don't know how I got on that tangent, but um, I guess going back to it, have a consistent morning and night routine, and it doesn't have to be expensive. It does not have to be aesthetically pleasing. It just has to work for you. That is my main emphasis. Find something that works for you, and you will be golden. Next up on my list of summer self-care is probably one of my favorite activities in the entire world and relates to one of my favorite items in the entire world and that is read a book personally i read on my kindle why because it's better okay 
It just is. I love my Kindle. It's so amazing. If you travel, if you want to bring books, places you go, get a Kindle, okay? It is so nice. You can also get free books on your Kindle. There's a thing called the library, a library app, okay? It's magic. Um, if you haven't heard about it, uh, get a library app on your phone and you can read digital books for free, okay? Everybody needs it. Anyway, read a book, okay? You're like, Carmen, mm, maybe you're someone who doesn't like to read, okay? Or maybe you're someone who does and you're like, I don't, why is this self-care? This is self-care because reading is good for you. Reading is something that stimulates your mind besides looking at your phone, okay? Because another important thing about our summer self-care is that we're trying to do activities away from our phone, take digital breaks, okay? And a good way to do this is to read a book, to educate yourself about a topic, even if this topic is about skincare or maybe about healthy eating or maybe it's about self-improvement, okay? You're still learning. Or maybe you just want to read a really trashy romance book. That is mentally stimulating, and I stand by that, okay? You can read whatever you want, and that I swear that is still better than being on your phone. Personally, for me, part of my night routine is reading every night before I go to bed, even if I'm reading just a few pages, or if I'm reading for like two hours, okay? It varies. But in my night routine, like I said, routines are important. Find what works for you. I like to read before bed, and this helps me fall asleep. This prevents me from going on my phone, checking social media before I go to sleep. And it's a really nice way to wind down, to feel at peace, and to not have like these anxious thoughts circling around. So read a book. And if you're someone who doesn't like books, um, maybe if you think about it, that might just be because you haven't found a good book or a book that is good for you. I know um, a lot of people recommend books. They're like, oh my god, this book is amazing. You're never going to read anything like it. It's great. You have to read it. And then you get to it and you're like, this sucks. I literally hate this. I don't like reading. How can anyone read this? And then you don't read like ever again. But the thing is, just because you read one bad book doesn't mean you should stop reading forever. It just means that you haven't found a book that you find to be really great. So I suggest trying out different genres. Maybe try a more action book, dystopian, fantasy, mystery, romance, fiction, nonfiction, whatever. And main thing, okay, if you're struggling with reading, you don't have to start with the classics, okay? I feel like people get stuck on that. I know when I was first getting back into reading, I was so set on having read all the classics, having read all these books that are so famous, that people say are so great, and then I would try to read one, and I was like, this literally sucks, this is so boring, and I can't do it, okay? So, that made me not want to read, but if I find, like, a trashy romance book, I'm gonna read it every time, okay? And is that a toxic trait? Maybe, maybe, okay? But if you want to get into reading, Find books that you're going to like and not just read something because someone says so. Um, and speaking of reading, if you want book recommendations, I have made a lot of book episodes all related to different genres, different times of the year. We have summer book recommendations, spooky fall book recommendations, cozy winter books, books I'm looking forward to reading. Um, so if you're interested in that and want some recommendations, check out um, those book episodes. I do have a playlist on my YouTube channel. I think it's called literally like book recs or something related to that. So if you want to find all those book related episodes, you can check out that YouTube playlist or you can just scroll on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening and find one of those book episodes. Oh. Okay, the next part of our summer self-care list is probably one of the most important, and that is go outside, okay? Find activities you enjoy outside. I feel like the best thing you can do for yourself is just be in nature and kind of like fall in love with it, you know? And I know that sounds really cringy, and like it kind of is, but also it's really true because I feel like life is so much better when you can appreciate the outdoors or when you get to be outside um it also I feel like can make you feel really mindful and 
like I mentioned earlier, is a good time to reflect. And reflection is key to self-care. So some activities that I like to do when being outside is going on hikes um, or hikes or walks, whatever. I always like to call a hike a walk because then it, it feels less daunting. So I can be like, yeah, I'm going on like a six mile walk. And that sounds less than a six mile hike. Okay. I don't know. But hiking, you can hike in a state park, um, national park, I don't know, somewhere around your house. Personally, I live somewhere where there is a lot of hiking. There's a lot of outdoor activities. Um, but you may not live somewhere like that. But if it's possible, you could try to drive somewhere and take a day trip out or even just take advantage of what's already around you. And if you're near water, I feel like some fun activities, obviously swimming, that's good, kayaking, canoeing, white water, rafting, uh, going to the lake, tubing. If you know someone with a boat, uh, go to the lake. If you don't, find a friend who has a boat. Um, probably the biggest life lesson that you'll learn from my podcast, I say in a sarcastic way, get a friend who has a boat, okay? This is something my dad always told me. This is, like, really random, but he was, like, there's nothing. He was, like, the only thing better than owning your own boat is knowing a friend that has a boat, okay? Because then you don't have to take care of it. But you can still, you know, go on a boat. So be outside. Um, experience nature. I feel like once you can appreciate nature, life just feels better. I, I don't know, because I think it's easy to get stuck thinking that things suck, that it's easy to get stuck in your phone world, like, oh, what is so-and-so doing? Oh, did you see so-and-so's private story? Look who they're with. Look where they are on Instagram. I can't believe this group of girls all posted together and I wasn't invited, blah, blah, blah. It's easy to get stuck in that sort of thing. So I think it's important to remind yourself that there is stuff outside of your little social bubble or there's stuff outside of what you know that's going on or things that seem important to you. And it's helpful to be outside and just think about, okay, whenever I'm struggling throughout the year, maybe in the fall or the winter, in the spring, I can think back to this place and know that it is still here and that while my life might seem chaotic, it's nice to remember that some things still stay stagnant pretty much or some things will still be the same and that's something my dad always said he was like it's interesting to think about how we can have so many different things going on in our lives but like this place will still be here and it'll still be here after you've changed or after you come back and I think that's a really cool thing to think about and remember so go outside even if it is 95 degrees and humid go outside Go to the pool, go to the lake, go to the beach. Just go outside, go for a walk, okay? And have the best freaking time. Next thing, okay? This last one is a bit extreme, but I feel like extreme in a fun, quirky way, okay? And that is to have like a reinvent yourself time because school's coming up, the school year. I know we all want to be looking our best, feeling our best, but I think it's easy um, to like get stuck feeling like, I don't feel so good about myself, kind of want to have a little change, and I think that is perfectly normal and totally okay. So the next thing on the summer self-care is to create like quote-unquote new you, okay? Like you're still you, but you're new and improved you, okay? Maybe you want to try a new haircut, mix things up. I feel like the best way to channel like a new version of yourself is to change some things physically just so you can have um like a physical reminder that things are different and I feel like haircuts are especially effective because if you think about it like when a lot of people go through breakups they cut their hair or like when people are going in a new chapter in their life, they cut your hair just because your hair can have so much meaning. I feel like especially for women or for anyone who has long hair, it's like a part of your identity, the way your hair looks, um, the length of your hair, and it can be heavily associated with beauty. So getting a haircut, I feel like can symbolize a new chapter in your life 
whether you're dyeing your hair or whether you're getting a trim or just like layers side what are those called like face framing pieces some highlights um or if you're just chopping it all off haircut symbolizes a new you symbolizes a new chapter it's you getting ready for the school year you getting ready to be your best self and i feel like it's also kind of something fun because I mean, hair always, it grows back. So like, it's something you can change but won't have a lasting impact, but it's still something that's kind of fun to do to mix things up, especially if you're feeling stagnant in your life and you're like, things are boring, let's mix it up. Another thing that you can also change is like your wardrobe. This one does involve like more money, I guess. But like, if you wanna find a new style sense, maybe you're not feeling what you've been wearing, um, try something new. Or another thing for the new you, shift your attitude, okay? Start seeing yourself as the best version of yourself. Start seeing yourself as the healthy version that you want to be. I talked about this in one episode. I can't remember which, but it was like, if you start acting like someone who is healthy, who works out, who eats well, who has routines, then you are going to become that person. So you just need to act like somebody who already does these things and then you start doing them. It's kind of like the fake it till you make it thing, but like more you're just doing it until it finally clicks type thing, I guess. Um, but I feel like having a new you, new version of yourself, even if it's not even completely, just mixing things up a bit. I think can be kind of fun, especially if you're not feeling it, if you're not feeling like what you've got going on, mix it up, try something fun, try something new. If you regret it, okay, that's fine. At least you know your hair can grow back, you can go back to whatever you're wearing, and you can always shift your attitude back to where it was before, okay? None of these things are permanent, things can always change in life, and I think that is something important to remember. Um, but yeah. So those were my summer self-care ideas and or tips, I guess. Um, let me know what you're doing this summer for self-care. And also remember to take the time for yourself, whether you implement something I suggested on this episode or if you're trying something yourself, um, whatever works best for you, try it out. Um, but remember, take time for yourself. It's important. Um, and take breaks. Okay, y'all. And I hope you have an amazing week. I hope the AC at your house is working um, and that you're living your best life. And remember, summer is almost over. So take advantage of the time you have left before school starts. Okay, because once it does, kind of sucks. Anyway, okay, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and follow me at the Girly Girl Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.